Good morning. I'm Tom Cato from Grace and Truth Fellowship in Raleigh. Um, I've been in the book of Joshua talking about uh, Rahab last, our last meeting. And uh, Rahab was a harlot, a prostitute, and uh, God was working uh, alone in her life about the coming judgment on Jericho where she lived. And so she took st steps, she endangered her life to save some spies that uh, Joshua had sent to check out Jericho and um, did not speak the truth to the king's men and said that they she had encountered them and had uh, left uh, to left the city gates and so that they should go pursue him. So, um, so, so Rahab goes up to the room and she speaks to these men and tell them, we know, we know that your, your God is the God of all. We heard about his, his work in Egypt. That was 40 years earlier and how he had destroyed uh, the Egyptian army and had left Egypt, taken his people, God's people out of Egypt. And then they encountered the Red Sea and how the Red Sea opened up and they walked on dry land. She'd heard that 40 years earlier. And then just before they were uh, approaching Jericho, they had destroyed two kingdoms. Uh, of course, I say they, but God, God, it was time for God to bring Israel into the promised land. And this promised land had been given to Abraham centuries ago. And so uh, we are beginning chapter three now where they are preparing to cross the, the Jordan River. So um, I'd like to pray and commit this time to you, to the Lord for his blessing. Our God and Father, we uh, thank you uh, for the privilege of your word. We pray that your word would uh, take place in our hearts and that we would uh, be guided by your word, that we would be submitted to your word. Uh, we thank you for the gift of salvation. Thank you for the, the sending the son of your love to die on the cross for our sins and to open the door for, uh, to, for hundreds and millions of others to come to know you. We pray that you would use this, uh, this recording to open the hearts, challenge the hearts of believers and open the hearts for believers to have a passion to share Christ. And so we ask for your blessing upon this time. We also want to thank you for fathers godly fathers lord we pray that others would join this realm over godly fathers this we live in a day and age when when uh there are so many broken homes and and children growing up with without fathers and and uh even mothers and so we pray lord uh, for your blessing on those who hold fast to the truth and will uh, be godly examples for their children so we we uh, thank you for fathers on this day as well. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to begin reading in, in my Bible with uh, the incident with uh, Joshua chapter 3. And I'm going to read the first 10 verses. And so Joshua chapter 3, beginning with verse 1. Then Joshua rose early in the morning. And he and all the sons of Israel set out for, from Shittim and came to the Jordan, and they lodged there before they crossed. And it came about at the end of three days that the officers went through the midst of the camp. And they commanded the people, saying, When you see the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord your God with the Levitical priest carrying it, then you shall set out from your place and go after it. However, there shall be between you and it a distance of two thousand cubits by measure. Do not come near it, that you may know the way by which you may go, for you have not passed this way before. Verse 5, Then Joshua said to the people, Consecrate yourselves, for tomorrow the Lord will do wonders among you. And Joshua spoke to the priest, saying, Take up the ark of the covenant, cross over ahead, to the, of, the, cross over ahead of the people, so that they took up the Ark of the Covenant and went ahead of the people. Verse 7. Now, now the Lord said to Joshua, This day I will begin to exalt you in the sight of all Israel, that they may know that just as you've been with me, with Moses, I will be with you. 
Verse 8, And you shall moreover command the priests who are carrying the ark of the covenant, saying, When you come to the edge of the waters of the Jordan, you shall stand still in the Jordan. Then Joshua said to the sons of Israel, Come here and hear the words of the Lord. And Joshua said this, By this you shall know that the living God is among you, and that he will assuredly depossess from before you the Canaanite, the Hittite, the Hevite, the Pezzarite, the, the Gergazite, the Amorite, and the Jebusite. Behold, the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord of all the earth is crossing over ahead of you into the Jordan. So in, in verse 1, Joshua rose up early in the morning. And you know what? I, I love this. I love the fact that Joshua rose up early morning. I'm an early riser. I get up quite early in the morning before uh, most of my family's up. And I go and I begin to have a devotional time with him. And so uh, Joshua um, was told that he should meditate on the word of God day and night. He should uh, live according to the law and all all the successes that, that he will experience will be because he's walking with the Lord listening to the direction that the Lord's given him through the, through the word of God. Um, he was directed by his commander in chief to be careful to do all according to the law. Where would his success come from? But you shall meditate on it day and night. Again, to make his way prosperous, and then he would have success. The word was on his tongue. He must be careful to do all the things written in it. Now, Joshua is a type is a picture of Jesus Christ. Matter of fact, uh, if you pronounce his name in Hebrew, it's Yeshua, which was the name of Jesus, Yeshua. Uh, God is my salvation. And so um, Joshua is is in not in perfection because he's still a man. There's, there's incidences in his life where he shines and shows that he's Christ-like. And so in Isaiah 50, Isaiah 50, verse 4 and 5, this is the Lord Jesus. In Mark uh, 135, he had gone out to the prayer. Uh, this is something to what he was doing in his time of prayer. He says, a tongue of a learner. A tongue of a learner. So he's asking God to give him a tongue of a learner. He was uh, the son of God, but he was also the son of man. How to sustain the weary with a word. He awakens my ear to listen as a learner. And so, so Jesus Christ was going out early in the morning to seek out the mind and heart and wisdom of God, God the Father, and to give him direction for his day. And then, you know, and that's why we need to have some time, whether you're, uh, um, I'm, I'm a springer, um, others are, are feelers. Um, they take a long time to wake up, so maybe their quiet time, their devotional time would be at a different time. But we all have to find that time where we can just separate from everything and just be alone and let God speak to us and give us direction. Um, he is in type as the Lord Jesus. Um, he is uh, also the captain of our salvation in Hebrews 2.10. It says, For it was fitting for him for whom all things and through whom all things, all things are in bringing many sons to glory to perfect the captain or author of our salvation through suffering. So he, the Lord Jesus, is in fact our Yeshua, our Joshua. He is a warrior. He is a leader. And uh, we want to make sure that we are following what he says. Uh, this Another part in, in verse 1, it says, And he and all the sons of Israel set out for Shittim and came to the Jordan. Now, uh, a few uh, Bible studies ago, I talked about the word Shittim, Shittim and it was, it, Shittim was a tree, acacia tree. It was a, one of the only trees that you would see in a, a wilderness, the desert. Um, where would it get its water source? You know, how would it live and how would it grow so big and, and strong? And the word for Shittim really means vigor and energy. Okay, and so it, it was alive in that desert and they used that the wood of that um that um the wood of that tree to build the ark of the covenant and in, uh, in it 
So um, in John chapter 10, John chapter 10, uh, 10, is he, the Lord Jesus says, I came that you may have life and have life more abundantly. Okay, and so he's the vigor, he's the energy. When, when, uh, when I trusted Christ as my Savior, I became a new creation in him. There was some, some drive within me that had never been there before, a drive to want to know this God that I, I decided to follow. And so the first thing I had was a, a Bible that my roommate, of all people, you know, he, he knew how crazy I was in college, uh, got me a Bible because he knew I, I was religious. I didn't have a relationship with Jesus Christ, but I was religious. They're two completely different things. They're opposite. One is you do things by repetition over and over again, and eventually you forget about what the meaning is. The other one is a relationship where God's speaking to us uh, through his word, and we learn uh, uh, many things about him that we didn't know before. Um, and so uh, so this is, uh, again, this is vigor and energy. The Israel people had been waiting for centuries for this uh, promised land given way but centuries ago we get to Abraham that God said specifically and I, I earlier in my Bible study I mentioned that I'd found at least 10 times that he reminds the people of God that he has a place for them to go and it, so it took him a long time to get there matter of fact uh, uh, the Israelites were slaves to Egypt for 400 years and at the end of that 400 years this was the time when God was beginning to, to set them free, when he, when he set them free from uh, Pharaoh, Egypt, and, and Pharaoh's army. Um, I can't imagine, you know, having heard this promise over and over again throughout their travels in the wilderness, uh, what God was going to give to them. I, their expectation, you know, finally, finally, this is getting closer to the truth. Um, and, there's, and again, when I think of that word shittim, it, it speaks of uh, vigor and energy. So there was this, this new generated uh, energy for them to want to, to uh, seek out this place that God said was going to be their home, homeland. In verse 2, in verse 2, uh, just a phrase, at the end of three days, the officers went through the midst of the camp. So they had been there. Uh, the spies had come back. Um, had told a report of uh, what Rahab said about the people. They were uh, they were fearful of Israel because of uh, uh, they um, they had just destroyed two two large uh, kingdoms uh, in the desert. Uh, but you know, again, when you say they did, God was doing the God was leading them in to do this. You know, they they couldn't have done it without Him. And and uh, the three days ver uh, speaks of resurrection. Christ had been in the grave for three days, separated from man. And then at the end of three days, he arose. In Acts chapter 2, it says that death could not keep him down. Death could not keep this one down. He was unique, far different than you and I, because he was without sin. And he went to the cross to pay for our sins so that we might have eternal life through what he did for us. He shed his precious blood for us. Um, and that, you, you know, um, I love to go back because I don't want to ever forget what Jesus Christ did for me. Um, and so three days speaks of uh, new new life, new energies and new purpose. I that's what happened to my life when I invited Christ in to, to be the Lord of my life. All of a sudden I had this gen, this this generated energy to want to know the God that saved me from my sins. Uh, again, the officers went through the midst of the camp. Uh, the officers went through the middle. They were sent by their leader to go out to the camp. And no, no doubt they were out there saying, hey, we're getting ready to, to cross. Make sure you have all your preparations. Make sure you, everything's packed and ready to go. Um, uh, and so they were encouraging him. They wanted to make sure if anybody needed help, you know, that they would have help. And so, you know, this speaks of, uh, to me, to some degree of, of the people in the church, you know, that we have people that we need to go out. The, the stronger ones go out and they keep checking on the weaker ones and, and, and uh, following up with them to, to bring them along. We want as many as we can to take into heaven with us because in heaven, heaven, we're going to be with the one who gave his life for us. So um, 
you know, and so one 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 thing it 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 said to me that that I kind of gone to sleep is I don't check enough on on people that haven't been coming to church to find out why to see what's going on. I, you know, God wants His people to be near Him, and so I, I you know I'm going to use this opportunity to begin to reach out to those that haven't been coming to church, and so may some of you uh, have that in mind as well. Verse three, verse three. The, and they commanded the people saying, when you see the ark of the covenant of the Lord, your God, with the Levitical priest carrying it, you shall set out from your place and go after it. And so uh, when you see the ark, the ark of the covenant of the Lord in Numbers 10, Numbers 10, verse 33, it says, thus they set out from the mount of the Lord three days journey with the ark of the covenant of the Lord journeying in front of them for three days to seek out a resting place. Now, you know what? The ark of the covenant spoke of the presence of God. Okay. You know, we have the presence of God. We have to make the commitment to invite Jesus Christ into our lives so that he can be Lord of our life, so he can begin to take over our life and show us the way to follow him. He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no one can come to my Father but by me. So it represented the, the, um, the presence of God. Uh, the Ark of the Covenant had in it ten tablets, Aaron's rod budded, and manna. Now, the ten the tab the ten the Ten Commandments that were in there were um, black and white. You either were following them or you weren't. And only Jesus Christ fulfilled every commandment that was ever given. And so we look to him. He's the one that had fulfilled it. We look to him for our, our, our source and our strength to walk with him. Aaron's rod budded. budded. Okay, this rod was, was basically a dead branch. And it would be, it was was put uh, in with uh, twelve other branches, and uh, Aaron's rod budded, and, and it it had it went through a stage. It was dead, and so it speaks of resurrection. It would from budding to flower to fruitfulness. Okay, uh, all spoke of the Lord Jesus. Okay, he is our great high priest. He's the one that that we go to because he's a sympathetic high priest. Why? Because he was one of us at one time except without sin. So, uh, and then there was manna in it. And manna is that bread that came down from heaven. In John 6, Jesus Christ says, I am the, the, the bread that came down from heaven. That speaks of nourishment and strength and energy that we get from him, okay? And so he, he is our source of, of our walk. If we don't spend time reading his word, then we become like someone who uh, starves themselves starves the new nature, the new creation in us that God has placed within us. And so we we are, don't have the energy, we don't have the influence to walk godly. And so we are only a, a um, I don't want to say useless, you know, to the Lord, but we, we usually are, are, are crying about all our murmuring, complaining about things. Um, and so there was uh, one other thing that this Ark of the Covenant had was the mercy seat. This is where the blood was sprinkled on once, one time a year to cover all the sins of Israel at one time. In Exodus, it began in, in when, when uh, God delivered uh, the uh, Israelite slaves out of the hands of Pharaoh, delivered him. And on the night before it happened, they uh, took a, a, a lamb that they had housed in her, uh, a young lamb that they had housed in their home for four for four uh, days, and after the fourth day, they killed it. And they, God said, put the blood on the doorpost of the of the house, and it basically formed, you know, uh, a cross. And so uh, this this lamb lamb, uh, they had familiarity with it. It, you know, I can imagine, you know, when you get a puppy, you know, how drawn or a cat, how you know, all the children would want to just love it and cuddle it. And uh, and so and then to see this this uh, animal killed and, and it must have been horrific to them. 
but then the Israelites, uh, the, the parents would have to tell the children how what the purpose was for it. And so that night, the angel of death passed over every Israel, Israel, Israeli home and um, judgment didn't come on it because God said, when I see the blood, I, I will surely pass over. And this is what, you know, speaks of the blood of Jesus Christ. God has shown us mercy. God has shown us grace with his blood that covers it. And so uh, uh, Romans 3, Romans 3, verses 24 and 26 to 26 says, Now being justified as a gift, freely by his grace through redemption, which is in Jesus Christ. In other words, God sent forth his son, Jesus Christ, to be the one through whom the shed blood, God would be able to reveal his mercy and grace to us. Verse 25 whom God displayed publicly as a propitiation, a mercy seat. That's what the word means. This is where God is appeased. This is where he's satisfied with that blood that he sees. But the blood only speaks of one person's blood, and that's the blood of his son. Um, this was to demonstrate and declare his righteousness. Okay, He had to pass, pay, uh, pass judgment on sin because of the forbearance God putting up he passed over sins previously committed. Verse 26, for the demonstration of his righteousness at the present time so that he would be the just and the justifier of the one who has faith in Jesus. God himself will provide the sacrifice. And that's what he said to Abraham when Abraham in Genesis uh, had taken up his son to sacrifice him. God had required it. And this is what God said to Abraham. He says, Abraham... Take your son, your only son, your son whom you love, and sacrifice him to me. And so Abraham in obedience did so and put him on the altar and you know had the fire and raised his knife and was going to uh, strike his son. And then the angel came and said, "God, now, now God knows that you are you know we're we're going to carry this out." And so um, Abraham told his son, "Hey, there's a a." a uh, he's told his son that God himself would provide the sacrifice. And God did on, on that mountain, Mount Moriah, where, where, which is where Jerusalem is, which where Christ was crucified centuries later. Um, but uh, he, um, he said to, uh, God himself would provide the sacrifice. Literally, just listening to it in Genesis, um, I would never have caught it. But God did, in fact, send his son to become the sacrifice for all mankind's sin. Um, in Hebrews chapter 6, I'm sorry, in Hebrews chapter 2, verse 9, but we see Jesus, who is made a little lower than the angels, for the suffering of death crowned with glory and honor, that he, by grace of God, through taste of death for every man. And so God, in his mercy and grace, uh, we see Jesus now as being that one who would be the propitiation of our sins. The only one that could appease God. The only one that could reconcile man with God. You see, we were enemies of God because we lived in sin. We had no ear to hear, no mouth to speak about him, and our lives did not show uh, that we were living for him. But he sent his son despite us, and, and uh, God demonstrates his love towards us and that while we were yet sinning Christ died for us you know and so uh, you know that's been been a meaningful verse to me in Romans uh, chapter 5 uh, that God is showing his love for mankind he sent the best and the perfect uh, gift his his own son to do this uh, reconciling man to God so now we turn back into the verse uh, that we're in uh, in Chapter 3, it says, with the Levitical priest carrying it. You know what? I don't know how many priests were on each side of the, the Ark of the Covenant, uh, but they were carrying it, okay? And no doubt their shoulders, they when they carried it, they, shoulder, they, they had it on their shoulders with dignity and strength. In Deuteronomy chapter uh, 33, verse 12, Deuteronomy chapter 33, verse 12, it said, O Benjamin, he said, 
May the beloved of the Lord dwell in security by him who shields him all the day and he dwells between his shoulders. Okay. And so uh, I, I placed that one in there because of the shoulders. You know, when we carry things a lot, we might carry it on our shoulders. It buries our, our wings. It speaks of, it speaks of strength in, in it. And then um, Isaiah 40, verse 11. Isaiah 40, verse 11. Like a shepherd, he will tend his flock. In his arms, he will gather the lambs and every, every, and, and carry them in his bosom. He will gently lead the nursing ewes. Okay, and so, you know, I, there's a picture of him carrying, you know, the lamb over his shoulder, the, the young ones especially. Um, and then the, another part of, of verse 3, it says, Then you shall set forth from your place. Okay, therefore, since we have so great a cloud of witnesses, speaking of all those who had died in Christ Jesus, surrounding us, let us lay aside every weight or encumbrance and sin, which so e easily entangles us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Okay, and this is the verse, this is the phrase in the verse, and fixing our eyes on Jesus the author and perfecter of our faith. You see, our eye, the, the Israelites' eyes were on that Ark of Covenant. The Ark of the Covenant led them through the desert, and they wouldn't go any place until the Ark of the Covenant was raised and the priests took off. Uh, then the people followed. They had to be ready to go at any moment's time to follow that Ark. And so our eye should be on the one who that Ark speaks of, the Lord Jesus Christ, fixing our eyes on Jesus. Uh, Matthew six twenty two. Again, this this I want to talk about our eye being on it. It says the eye is the lamp of the body. So if your eye is clear and single, your whole body will be full of light. That means that you know when you're when you uh, you know I don't know much about archery, but I have shot an arrow at a, a target. That means your eyes on that target. You want to hit the very center because that's where it counts. Okay. And Jesus Christ, our eye is the target. Um, Exodus 33 verses 13 and 14 through 14. Exodus 33 verses 13 and 14. Now, therefore, I pray if I have found favor in your sight, this is Moses speaking to God. Let me know your ways that I may know you, that I may find grace in your sight. You see, there was a time when Moses wanted to know him even more than that he, than he knew him. He said that I may know him, and here's God's answer. And he said, my presence shall go with you, and I will give you rest. Okay, so uh, he, you know, our eyes upon him, the heart wants to follow him, and God delivers he delivers our request because our obedience in God melts God's heart. God loves us and he wants us to willingly, willingly follow him. Um, and then we have a little fight going on because what we do have in Christ Jesus, 2 Timothy 6 verses 12 through 15, and I'll just read a few of that, not the whole thing. It says, fight the good fight of faith. Take hold of eternal life to which you were called and you made good confession in the presence of many witnesses. Okay? He says, fight for it. Can you fight for this relationship? Keep it maintaining. You know, people are, we're going to have so many objections coming in our life. The world, uh, you know, our eyes, the, the, the world, uh, and, and the devil himself will be trying to distract us. Uh, and then Galatians, many of us know Galatians 2.20. Galatians 2.20 says, I've been crucified with Christ. That means I died with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live, I live in the flesh by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. You know, that should grip our hearts because the Son of God gave everything to win us to himself. He gave it all. He took our, our judgment so that we would never have to go to hell. And then he went in the death for us. 
And when he died, I died. When he arose, I arose because death could not keep him down. Um, and in, in Jude, again, this is another issue with uh, keeping your eye on Christ. It says, Beloved, while I was making every, every effort to write to you about a common salvation, I felt it necessary to you, appealing to you, that you contend earnestly for the faith once delivered to us. So we don't want people to come along and try to mix their own uh, interpretations of thing about what the Word of God is. We want to contend and fight for what was given to us from the very beginning, to hold fast to it and not to let things change because God is set only one way. Christ said it himself, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no man can, can come to the Father but by me. Uh, and verse 4, verse 4, um, excuse me while I take a drink. Verse 4, it says, however, there, there shall be between you and it, the ark, a distance of 2,000 cubits by measure. Do not come near it, that you may know the way which you shall go, for you have not passed this way before. You know, there's a distance between, between the people of God and the ark. And that was 200, that was 2,000 cubits. Now that's a little bit more than a half a mile that the people of God had to uh, keep at a distance. Why? For the first place, they could keep their eyes on the ark because they were told to keep the eyes on, on the ark. Okay, and so if they were too close, it, people would not be able to see it. And so this distancing, but there's another thing. God is holy and we're not. I am not even sure if I can define to you what that word holy means. I've only seen pictures of it in the Bible. Moses, when he was up on the mountain, he saw the burning bush. And then a, a voice spoke to him. He went down on his face. He dropped down on his face, um, which, you know, he never encountered uh, uh, this, this presence of this uh, fire burning, but yet the, the bush would not burn. Though you and I are sons and daughters of Christ, we never want to, uh, to, uh, to treat Jesus Christ as, as like, as like common, excuse me, I have a little bug flying in front of me, uh, as uh, common. He's not like us. He's holy and we're not. And so sometimes I hear people say, oh, the man in the sky, you know, he'll help you. He's more than the man in the sky. He's, he's the glorious King of kings and Lord of lords. He's the one that went to the cross, you know, and so we don't ever want to be um, taken advantage of the a familiarity of him. He, we, we want to have this relationship, but there's still... We are not like him. He is God in the flesh. And so we don't want to um, disrespect him in any way. His person, um, and Isaiah <clears throat> Isaiah 6, just a few verses in, in Isaiah 6, verses uh, 1 and 2, it says, The Lord sitting on the throne, lofty, exalted, with the train of his robe, fill, uh, train of his robe filling the temple. Seraphim stood above him, each having six wings. With two they covered his face, and with two he covered his feet, and with two he flew. And one would call out to the other and say, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. You know what? The angels could never really see God in his person, in his holy, glorious person. They themselves, man cannot see God in his otherwise we die if we saw him in our, our presence, you know, unless God has some way to cover us and, and, and which he did with Moses. Moses saw his glory passing by, but he didn't look at the front. He looked at the back. And so, uh, you know, the Lord of hosts, the whole earth is full of his glory. And so, uh, and, and then Isaiah, of course, he falls down as a dead man. He goes, woe is me. Woe is me. And then uh, when an angel came down with a burning coal in his hand and he took it, from the altar with tongs, and he touched my mouth with it and said, Behold, this has touched your lips. Your iniquity is taken away and your sins are forgiven. So 
God is, we have to maintain this distance of God is holiness in, um, in it. Um, going on uh, to uh, three, uh, verse four, it's, I'm sorry, ch chapter three, verse four, that you may know the way. And so when that ark was going before them, and they were going, the priests were going to go into the edge of the water. The uh, all the Israelites were to keep their eyes. It says because so that you may know the way which you shall go. They had never been this way. They'd never been to Jericho. Of course, the two spies had. They just got back from it. Okay, but they had never crossed this river before. And remember, this river was rushing tor torrent. It was. Uh, um, I'm not sure. Um, reg in, in, in regular time, regular seasons, the river was usually about 90 to 100 feet wide. But at this time of the year, it was spring. The snow was melting from the mountains and it was coming down and it was rushing. There was a torrent. OK, I don't know how those uh, how the um, spies came back, but they came. Uh, they had to go through that river to get back to where they were going. And yet God's grace it brought him through um but uh, i'm going to finish up on on this it said uh they'd never been this way before um neither did we know the way you know i wrote that down you know neither did we know the way uh, i can remember having religion in my life but not relationship you know i knew god from a distance but i didn't know god in the intimacy that god wanted me to know him wanted me to know more of him and um he wanted me to know the person of his son in an intimate way and so we have the four gospels we see four sides of the lord jesus christ in the gospels and in matthew he's the king in mark he's the servant in um luke he's the son of man in john he's the he's the the bird from heaven he's the son of god you know the the son of man son of uh, the son of, of god um, and so we didn't know, know the way until, until God began to speak to us through his word. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. You've got to hear it. Rahab heard about it, heard about it, believed it and, and asked for shelter for her protection of, for her own family when, when they got, because they knew that they, they, the God had destroyed Egypt, the God had destroyed the Amorites. And so we, um, we look at that. And so, for you've not passed this way, okay? You know, the Christian life, for me, I don't know. I didn't know how to act. I didn't know how to behave. I've never been this way. It's a whole different picture of being religious, different relationship. And sometimes, you know, when we go different ways, you know, there, we, you know, we want to we, uh, try out um, different things, something new. Many of us don't like change in our life. We don't like it. others may be like Peter, who when the, in the in the midst of the storm and the Lord Jesus walks out on the water, you know, he saw him over there and he and he said, uh, Peter said to him, Lord, if it's you command me to come to you on the water. And he said, come, Peter. And Peter got on that got out of that boat and walked on the water and his eyes were on him. But then he took his eyes off and then he looked at the raging water, the, the storm blowing and fear gripped him, and he started sinking. And the Lord Jesus, of course, is there, reached his hand out and grabbed him. That's the way he is with our life, too. Um, you know, so there's ways that we haven't been. And God, it's new to us, and, and yet we, we can't be fearful. We have to go through prayer, prayerfully with our eyes on, on him. Um, uh, I, I think I'm going to stop right here because I have a, quite quite a bit to talk about concentration. But one thing um, uh, Spurgeon said, you know, and this applies to going, you know, someplace that you've never been before. He says, it takes holy courage, brave reliance upon God, a fervent zeal. Now, if we're going someplace and we're following God, someplace we've never been before, God's going to give us the fervent zeal to do that, the spiritual energy to do it. Confidence in prayer, unspeakable joy. Okay, we we are going to know that God is 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 pushing us through. 
um, somewhat like uh, when he pushed the water back, which which you'll hear about um, in the Jordan River. You know, it was a different a different uh, you know a way of of taking care of the water than the Red Sea. And so we'll talk about that next week. And so I want to thank you uh, for your time. Um, again, happy Father's Day to all those. We um, want to close in prayer. Our God and Father, thank you for this time we've had together in your word. Thank you for all the little um, microscopic pictures of, of, of where we are, what we where we need to be in Christ Jesus. I pray, Lord, that... Um, that the end result would be that that those who uh, hear this message would be challenged, uh, would say, yes, I've been sitting in the same place too long. I need to move for you, Lord. And especially in the times that we live in, Lord, we've had such uh, tragic things going on in, the, in our country, Lord, with with the coronavirus uh, um, causing us to meet in a different way with the, the rioting over the, the murder of a, of a, a, a young black man, um, unnecessary, Lord, and lawlessness uh, seems to be increasing, Lord. And so we pray, Lord, that you would use these uh, terrible, horrific things, Lord, to, uh, to tenderize the hearts of people so that we might be used by you to share the gospel. Thank you for your great love for us in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. All right. God bless you. Thank you for being with me.